Yes. Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Monique, owner of Ashley's Yummy Tummy. Uh, make sure y'all go like and subscribe to the YouTube page and also to my business Facebook page and go to my website where you can go order sauces and other things as well. Or you can, um, but I just go there, go to the YouTube page. All right, so we have awesome Courtney. We have amazing Kista and tonight okay so y'all I have so many topics that I want to talk about but and you know we got to narrow it down to like usually like three I didn't switch up like that's why when y'all be like what are we talking about what are we talking about I'm like Ugh. and then I I be switching stuff up I just that's why I hate kind of like saying what we're going to talk about like during the week give me like 24 hours before we then I kind of have it locked down. But then again, even today when I was like trying to, you know, get cute or whatever, I was like, you know what? Okay, so how's everyone doing? I'm doing great after a stressful week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you have me kind of, you have me doing like some amorias, some heart, like when you said what you said, I was like, oh my God, she was alone while she was going through this. <laughs> But Keisha, how are you? I'm good. Okay. All right. All right. So let's get into this. I want everyone to know that a lot of this stuff is kind of based off of my personal life. All right. <laughs> so once again, we want, it's kind of, you know, for us, uh, I'm a black woman, so it's kind of like topics that I be thinking about and other women as well. And uh, we need black men to chime in on these things to help us out, you know, help us guide us to the right path, help us guide us into a, a relationship, marriage, family, you know, get, a, get us together if we need to be that, need, that need to be done. All right, so the first topic, y'all, I want to talk about is, I think it's Courtney's uh, current phase and what I'm trying to back out of, but it's I want to normalizing healthy relationships, meaning going into relationships are automatically thinking guys that you meet, they automatically ain't shit, automatically. And I understand the reason why we think that is because of our previous and past experiences. So it's very valid. I have, I think I have, uh, what is it, PTSD or PSTD? Which one is it? Which acronym is it? PTSD, but okay. I have PTSD. I, I have PTSD of men ain't shit, you know. But I'm slowly. I'm not. I'm not 100 recovered. I'm. 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 I'm in therapy. I'm like. Ugh. I'm a good thirty. I'm a good thirty. Seventy five percent of me have 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 healed, and seventy no. No, 70% of me have healed and I'm in the phase of like, there may be some good guys out here. Haven't met them, but you know, are they married? But then again, they be foolish shit too, you know. Um, so what are y'all thoughts on um men ain't shit? Keista. Uh-uh. We're gonna let you go first. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna go ahead and let you get this all out. That's what we <laughs> Look, so, hold on, and Courtney, I'm giving you two minutes, <laughs> two <laughs> minutes, and your time okay, starts so, now. Y'all know that I'm almost, okay, y'all know I'm stuck on men ain't shit, and yeah. I'm not saying that, okay, so when I say men ain't shit, I'm not saying like bad men and good men, I'm just saying in general, men ain't shit, whether it's a good man or it's a bad man, I'm sorry, you can't convince me otherwise, whether it comes to, uh, um, consistency communication all that good stuff just men ain't shit and that's just what i'm stuck on right now i'm sorry i don't think any and it's because well it wasn't a situation ship but <laughs> but it was can just you pause there? What, can you explain to the to people who are not familiar with that term what's the difference between a situation ship and a relationship well, a relationship, of course, I mean, everyone knows what a relationship is. You're with that person. It's exclusive. You know, y'all aren't denying each other. A situationship is more so like, um, like y'all deal with each other. You know how you used to say, oh, we talk. You talking about me personally? Or 
No, just like in general. You know how like you use the Like a person be like, oh, we, we talk. Okay. Yeah, we talk. So it's like you kind of, you don't claim that person, but you're like, yeah, I deal with them. Like you make okay. it known. So I would consider that a situation. Or maybe some people, you know, I'm pretty private. Not a lot of people know my business. So, I mean, just a- any way where you're not, where you're dealing with each other on a regular basis, but it's not exclusive. Mm-hmm. What I was talking about with me was not either one of those. So I guess I can't really call it either one, but either way, mm-hmm. it was still like the most minimal basic type of shit and he just he just he wouldn't shit so <laughs> he's the, before i get into that's my, just my I, thing i just think men ain't shit. they just not and it's not their fault necessarily they just they just ain't shit <laughs> right on time good time he, he said, let me go with your uh I, before you go into uh the biblical version of men ain't shit uh let's go with the regular version of men ain't shit prior to the you know you being you know you know give us your real opinion then give us the you know matter of fact just give us an ain't shit story give us give us an ain't shit real life story when you first discovered as an adult a grown woman that this man ain't shit oh so which one you want that's a, a story <laughs> that was that was the reason why yeah. i want a, a quick story is because we know that the, we know the angle that you're going with but we want to hear have you been through the ancient okay so how about i give you a story okay so let me give you a story that involved both so okay. you get a little bit of michelle and regular okay okay all right so actually i went through the phase i'm not in this phase now though that men ain't nothing Okay. But uh, I went through the phase as far as being angry, being upset, being mad, not getting treated right, all that stuff. Well, there was the guy that I was introduced to and um, everything was going okay. Well, then all of a sudden he asked me about a female and uh, we was introduced to a female, we a mutual female we know. Okay. And then when I was on the phone with this mutual female, I could hear a female in the background say his name when I was just informed that they don't even know each other. So time go on. Uh, we having what we used to call our girls night out okay. and all that stuff. And then um, he just started changing and acting different. And I was like, what in the world is going on? So I... Uh, would try to reach out to him, but he wouldn't really say anything. So I said, okay. So then that morning, while all of us was just chilling, the girl that said his name came to our room. And while she was there, I heard a voice say, ask her what she think of y'all. And okay. what she think of you two, you and him. And I said, I'm not going to bother her. So the voice said it again, ask her what she think of you and him. This was and an I inner said, voice, not an outer voice. No, like this, like how they say, how they say, uh, the like how the Lord uh, talked okay. to you. Okay, I this is Him talking to me. Okay, so that second time He said, I said I'm not gonna say nothing. So that third time it got a little rough, not rough, but it got a little harder and a little louder. And it said, "Ask her what she thinks." So when I asked her, she didn't give me the answer I was looking for. She was like, "Well, you gotta talk to Him and see where y'all at and." This and the other. I said, okay, I called him. He didn't answer. I called him out for her phone. He answered. I was like, I thought you didn't know her. And like all of it, it just went crazy. And this was during my drinking time. So I was drinking. He came over. We was about to fight the whole works. Yes, I was like, you ain't nothing. And I was like, she'll be a fool to stay with you. Because if you do it to me, you'll do it to her. Right, and then right. the sister jumped in and don't be calling my sister no fool. I said, I didn't call her a fool, but I, I, I'm you fool because you thought I called her a fool. And yeah, it just went from there. So that's when I was at a point and I'm like, you know what? They, no. They, yeah, they, that, that situation ain't for you. Okay, so thank you for sharing your ancient story. So now how do you feel about, how do you feel about men? Um, how do you feel about Black women saying that men ain't shit? Um, <laughs> really, Courtney? Uh, actually, I'm understanding to it. 
I just say be specific and just say some aren't that okay. because you actually do have those out here that definitely does not fall into that category and yeah. because when you when you just say men you could be talking about that good husband over there and you know she has a good husband he's a real good man so you can't really put them all into the category because that's like when they say all black that's the way they say black women are angry but all of us are not angry that's true god knows that's true and i would be trying hard that's, to fight that that's stereotype. Very true. that's very true okay so give me a number out of 100 percent. because i said like 30 ain't shit out of 70 like no i want to go higher 75 percent ain't shit <laughs> and then out of that 25 that's like probably a good man 25 percent maybe like 20 percent no i'm gonna say yeah 20 percent is married and then five percent is just incarcerated probably <laughs> and incarcerated men ain't shitty because they be have like two three girlfriends like ugh, it's just hard but the whole point of it is is um i, I want to on my journey of self-discovery and becoming a, a, a better woman you know um I think that we need to flip that around with uh going into situations or going into uh situationships or relationships or just meeting a new person period man or woman um that we need to start normalizing healthy relationships uh I think and Kista helped me with this as well like we should just go into it uh positive like be perky be a cheer cheerleader like we shouldn't take old baggage old problems and old situations into new new right. situation you know new potentially new relationships or it just may be a situation ship um, i agree with that a hundred percent um like i say men ain't shit all the time and i you know i'm a firm believer of that however i'm not going to bring that into my next relationship i i agree with the whole don't bring the old baggage to the new uh new relationship because that has nothing to do with them um right. i'm not going to act on anything if you i'm not going to act on anything that you haven't uh proven to me yet does that make sense right right mm -hmm. yeah um it makes perfect sense yeah and it's it's okay to and this is so weird this is like so therapy talking it's okay to be happy. <laughs> it's okay to be happy. Like, and Courtney, you deserve yeah. happiness. Lisa, you deserve happiness. Ashley, you deserve happiness. And like, so, but it's just like, we just get so like pressed down with the bullshit from men, you know, that you just be like, honestly, I call it the restart button. <sighs> like, I'm so sick and tired of pressing this button. You know what I'm saying? So you just be like, you know what? I understand. Low key, I kind of understand why women go to the other side. You know, I, I kind of get it. You know, that's I, not I'm the. Just, I'm just saying that's a whole nother topic. But I'm just saying because if you say, "God, these men ain't shit," like you just be like, you know what? I'm done. I'm sick of it. I'm over it. I don't want to do it no more. You know what? Girlfriend, me. You know, not me. No, no that's but, not how that but you works. You got some of them that's just as bad as the dude. That's true. Especially well, you you. You that's true because I've been seeing some things, you know, where even they not happy, you know. You be like, damn, you cheat too. Like, ain't nobody just goodness. Like, is there a patch or something? Is there a vaccine for cheating? Like, goodness, like it's just hard. I gotta want to be faithful. Absolutely. So, like I said, um, I think we should just start as black women. We need to start going in, normalizing healthy relationships don't like i said don't take the old situations and old problems into the new situation it's okay to be happy um my thing is uh constantly questioning my new potential my new friend my new associate but i do that i do those repetitive questions not to like annoy him or nag him or be a bitch you know it's just more of like how old you say you were again uh you say divorce right uh separated like you know um how many kids you say you got because i just had a situation like and right now i'm in the process of talking to someone new that i i really like but after i let a person go because you know how the old people say what's done in the dark comes to the light and one the, what don't come out in the wash come out in the rinse well it's so ironic that after i let a person go that i was dealing with 
shit started unfolding. And I'm like, oh my God, these guys are, and he was like older, like 45 years old, 45 years old, living a double life. Like you got a whole family over here, bro. So you'd be like, in your mind, you'd be like, well, damn it. What age do they stop with these damn games? A lot of them be trying to keep up. Well, well I mean, like, it, tr- it trusts me. Because honestly, I was in a phase that I don't think people should get married in their 20s and 30s. I was, I'm was i a firm believer of, like, you should get married, like, in your 40s. Like, damn near 50. But he just, he just, that one person just crashed everything that I thought about that theory. So now I'm back on the... What's the point of even getting married anyway? They just love it. But like I said, I'm changing. So I want to normalize healthy relationships. I want to go into it still asking those specific questions that I need to know. What's your credit score? What's your what's your goals, your short-term goals? Um, how's your family? Are you family orientated? Who you don't like? Who, you know, like those types of things. Cause I feel like if I want to um, you know, have a family with you, like DNA is important. So I'm going to go into relationships or situationships happy, not always on guard because I'm a Scorpio already. So I'm already ready to, you know. I mean, absolutely. That's how you're supposed to do it. If you aren't going into a relationship or a situationship happy or wanting it, you shouldn't be doing it, period. Right. I mean, there's no reason for you to be with somebody who you're always going to question. That just doesn't make sense. But it's so it's so easy to do that because of what happened in the past, though. Like you be like, oh, I'm just gonna take time out for myself because that's a lot. Another thing that women be like that we say, I'm just gonna date myself, which I I'm a firm believer believer in it. Like you 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 should date like in between, you know, um, like I guess it's like going to school. Like you need some time off. You need some time for yourself. You know, like working with a job. You don't work the whole 365 days a year, you, you have vacations, you know, here and there, you know, so I feel like that's how dating should be kind of, you know, regroup, reset. Absolutely. There's some people who jump from relationship to relationship to relationship. I just got out of a long relationship. Well, not just, it's been a while because I've dated myself and I'm just trying to get a crumb of a situation ship, but that's not seeming to happen. <laughs> but <laughs> I just want a crumb. A crumb. <laughs> but yeah you can't you have to take time off for yourself because you don't know well I don't know that is different with different people for me personally I didn't know who I was single so I had to figure that out right and plus a lot of my wants a lot of the things that I wanted in a partner in a relationship even the things I needed to change about myself going into another relationship I had to work on that which I think I'm ready for now but right after the my last relationship no I couldn't have did that Okay. Uh, and I think in, in the process of like you dating yourself, whatever situation or relationship you got out of, you be like, you have like a vision, um, a mental vision board and you be like, I'm not accepting this anymore. I'm not accepting that. They got to have this. They got to bring this, which is fine. Like, don't make, don't let, and I'm, I'm talking to y'all, but I'm talking to myself as well. Don't let me and make you, make you feel like, well, damn, because I was like, he got to have a source of income. He ain't got to make as much as I got, but he need to have some source of income. He need transportation. It ain't got to be no up-to-date car with no rims. And no, it just needs to be some transportation besides a bicycle, you know? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I like, even if he's not living by himself, like it need to make sense to where if we're dating and I want to come over there, I need to feel comfortable. You know, like I don't, if living with your mom I guess is okay but at a certain age you just you it's time to grow up bro like I think there's a, there has to be a reason for if you're like living with your mom and you don't have a, a car or something like that there has to be a reason for a, a valid legitimate reason because like, I'm a helper I'm a helper like if I'm with you like I'll assist you I'll help you you know right, but you got to see that person's working towards that too because I'm not but I'm not just giving you no money now I'm not giving you I'm not giving you the keys to a vehicle or giving you a thousand dollars towards a, a, a car no it I'll match you. Right. Like I'll do fifty percent. You know, I'll match. Like, hey, babe, uh, you come up with a thousand, and I'll match you with a thousand. And then, right. honestly, if it's something like fifteen hundred, because I saw that he really is working overtime, he really, you know, he's really trying. I'll go ahead and just give him an extra five or something. You know, um, but, but yeah, okay. So that topic was normalizing healthy relationships it's okay to go into a relationship 
not thinking that a black man ain't shit because all of them aren't shit so with that being said because we do go into relationships a lot of us do go in mentally with that let's slide on in our cha-cha slide to the next one which is um because we sometimes print your print uh sometimes we do feel like a lot of times we feel like black men ain't shit so with that being said would you consider dating outside of your race if you keep bumping into these black men that ain't shit how, how, would you consider dating a non black man 100 percent. i'll do that now i'm not here's my here's my stamp of interracial dating i feel like at a okay I understand that we all have preferences and all that stuff like that I know me personally I would love to marry a black man and settle down with a black man that would be great however I'm not gonna block myself from something else because for all I know my soulmate is a five foot four Asian man granted I'm not naturally attracted to that but that could be my soulmate for all I know and I'm not gonna block myself from that happiness just because I'm sticking to my own race so I, I 100%, it doesn't have to be like, I reach my cap with black men. It's just, if it, if I, if that's the person that I ended up connecting with and matching souls with, that's who I'm going to be with. Okay. Point blank period. He said, uh, I know you don't feel like most black men are, aren't shit, but besides that, would you consider dating outside your race? Yes. Okay. If yes, why? If no, why? Girl, yes. And the only the only why I could give. Okay. Now, this is literally I'm right. laughing because Ashley looks so shocked. I don't know why. Hey. 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 We done, we done, but we done talked about this. I done told you if the Lord send me a white one, let me, please let him look like Aquaman. Let I probably when you said the W word, I probably blocked you out and just kept on prints until you know. Okay. <laughs> it's possible. But no, I would like rather he's made white french uh italian uh like oh, it a sub a sub a sub really italian. It, it really <laughs> it really to me it really doesn't matter for the simple fact of we we're all people like i'm I, i'm not a, a person of color i don't you know so when i actually i'd be excited to see interracial dating and interracial marriages and stuff like that that literally is something that's dear to my heart because we done been categorized by color for so long and so much and it's not just black people you got them other you got other races or other colors Mm -hmm. that have been held down because of who they are or how they are right so to see the interracial thing is like wonderful to me because then that lets me know that somewhere we are being we're able to get along because I, I promise you one thing when you die ain't nobody gonna look at your color then so what's the point of looking at your color now okay so this is the thing i know the question is framed of would you consider dating outside your race um and i'm gonna pull a caucasian person card i'm not racist i have a ca- a white friend <laughs> you know they love to say i have a black friend his name is james <laughs> <laughs> and I have a black female friend. Her name is get your friend. You know. Get your friend. Keep okay, friend. so this is the thing. Um, clearly, y'all know I'm not racist whatsoever, uh, because I do have uh, Caucasian friends um, and associates, and uh, I've worked with a lot of Caucasian people. And uh, depending on what type of black people that I'm around, typically if it's more hood urban people, you know, they consider me. I talk like a white girl, you know, um, which is strange to me, uh, but I'll, I'll take it. You know, that means I'm college educated, you know, but I, I feel like I'm a chameleon. I can adapt to whatever situation or environment that I'm in. Uh, okay. So my preference, my stance on this is I prefer to be with a black man. Um, Clearly. I just, I just, I can't do it. I, I just, I, because of the history, I get what you're saying, Keista. Courtney, you're just more like free-spirited. You know, you're just like, you're, and you're younger, you know, you're 28. Keista, she, she's around my age, 34. Um, and she's like, I get, because of the past and the history, I'm happy, I'm thrilled. You know, I, I, I'm happy about that. You know, when I see interracial dating. I'm more on the, 
I don't care about their relationship. It's just me. I can't do it. The only way I would do it be with a Caucasian person. Um, because typically when we talk about interracial, we ain't talking about what Courtney said, like Asian. It's usually black and white. I, even though we know there's more ethnicities out here, but it's usually black and white, you know. Okay, so I just I just can't do it. The history, I just I just cannot do it. And this is one of the main reasons why. And I know a lot of people may look at this and say, well, the guy that you're dating, he's usually he's probably gonna be 35 like you, Ashley, and he's not like that. Well, just let's let's be realistic. Going over to his family, they're probably like that, especially Southern, because you know, me and Keith were from South Carolina. So here in South Carolina, if he's not like that, which would be shocking, his family is like that. Like my Caucasian friends now, their aunts and uncles are racist. They're racist. And it makes me uncomfortable, you know. Um we joke about it, you know, but uh, it's still realistic. Like they are racist. Some people are still riding around with the Confederate flag. Like how am I, if I'm dating a white man, how am I supposed to go over to the cookout and date Bubba pulling up with the Confederate flag, you know, and I just, and I know okay. people are like, well, that's Bubba. That ain't got nothing to do with um Brian, you know, or Brad. All right, Tom. Because the Confederate flag, you got to remember, you got to know, do they have the Confederate flag up for the original meaning or do they have it up because of that meaning? Wait, girl, please. You, 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 you know what it is. We're from South Carolina. We know what it is. But anyway, uh, so I, me personally, my stance on it is I do not plan on dating outside my race. Uh, I go down fighting, swinging for the black man. <laughs> the ones that are good successful black men not the ones that ain't shit you know uh whatever but um I, my preference is i want my cute chubby little brown babies that's that's what i want that's why i want to create and then i want to keep wealth into the black community i want to keep passing it down because you know another thing like what kanye west say once a black man get on he leave ass for a white girl which is true you know um, and that's a whole nother topic that we can get into that, which I, I need to bring my friend up here because listen, the things that I heard about that, why black men choose Caucasian women versus us, you know, that who's been down with them from the beginning. Y'all will be, Courtney, you'll be so mad. <laughs> you probably tear that down. You all box up behind you. <laughs> but um, but yeah, my, my take on it is I'm going to stick with him my ethnicity um for so many reasons um passing down legacy and generational wealth keeping it within the black community and um i i have a quick question for you mm -hmm. do you consider biracial people not black uh i can un un i want to say unfortunately but the reason why I say unfortunately is because they are they they are automatically labeled as black, automatically. And, and I, but I get that we know because of DNA they are really biracial, you know. But unfortunately, they have to choose a side. Like you have two options: they can personally choose a side, which is I want to be identified as because you know we're in this new era of uh, call me as I want to be called. So if they like my complexion, I'm I'm. I'm brown, so but I do have Caucasian people in my family, right? Later on down, you know, not too far down like most people, but you know. So if I say because I let's say I know my Caucasian family, like I'm around them, so I'm like I would like to be addressed as Ashley, and I am. Oh God, I'm doing a voice. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> but I mean, automatically they're gonna be black. Automatically. I was just going to say, I, from the conversations I've had with biracial people, um, it's like they don't even get a chance to pick a side. And that's with either side. They're too Black for the white people, and they're too white for the Black people, which right. is sad. Which, which sucks. It, right. it sucks for them because it's almost like, I don't know, when you say like they have to pick a side, it's almost like having saying you have to, you're forced to choose an identity, even if you don't fully agree with that. And I don't think that's necessarily fair. I mean, I get what you're saying, but I don't think that's really fair. But 
It's not. I, I don't oh. want them to, I want them to be what they are, which is biracial. But at the end of the day, they're black. And the reason why is because black people, we gonna call them black. Oh, your mama was black or your dad, you black. And then Caucasian people, they automatically, that drop of inward blood, they're automatically black. So yeah. they're black by default. So you say, say for whatever reason, <laughs> you ended up with a white man, right? And having babies and stuff. And I know you said you wanted to pass the the wealth onto the community, onto you know our people. Mm-hmm. So you wouldn't, if you had biracial kids, you wouldn't consider that passing that still into the community. Almost oh, definitely, because remember they're black because of me. Okay. And actually, to help, actually, if Caucasian people want to help the black community and build us up, you know. You should marry, you should do um, more interracial dating, like marry more black people, have more black babies, because now that wealth, that your Caucasian wealth is now going into the black, is black dollars. They're flipping into black dollars. They're, they're helping building us up. So not only just, you know, maybe Caucasian people are meeting uh, black American people at these protests and, you know, at these marches and rallies and stuff. And hopefully they're finding black love, hashtag black love. You know, um, and then they're having, like I said, if I, using your example, if I met a Caucasian man and I fell in love, first off, check my drink because something ain't right. You know, y'all know, y'all check my drink. But if I fell in love, we still, those, those are considered black babies by default because of me. I gotcha. So um, it's, it's, it's still within the, you know, damn. black community. I had a point, but I forgot it. So, it's okay. So, yeah. So, just to recap, I will not date outside my race. I'm 100% wanting a black man. Oh, someone commented. Okay. Uh, Sugar Knox uh, said, I'm with Ashley Monique. I can't do it because of the history. Right, right. Yeah. I, I but you know what? I think I remember my point. But you know what? They say what in like 10 years or something like that, white people are going to be the minority. So apparently they're expecting a lot of people to start. And then that's, and, and because of, and what you're saying, if that's true, then it's going outside of just black and white because now you have like, honestly, and I know this is going to sound so crazy, like me really seeing like interracial relationships because I'm born and raised in South Carolina, a small rural town in South Carolina. I really started seeing interracial relationships when I went on a cruise, my very first cruise. And when I moved to Columbia. So those were both like around 2015, 2016, which wow. is, and I was born in 85. So that that's sad. Like I literally was looking like, and then, um, and then like talking to people from college and stuff, I was like, how, like guys, a girl, I'm like, how do you end up talking to a Hispanic person? Because I don't see Hispanic people around here in Marion or you know, in, Mar- in in Marion, in Columbia, there's a lot. But the only time I see a Hispanic person in Marion, which I was confused at Food Line and Walmart, I'm like, why they got a Hispanic aisle for? Where are they? You know, I just see them working. I, I'm so serious, though. Like, I'm not trying to be funny. I know. I don't see them. Other than, but like, you know on a roof. <clears throat> I was going to say, but you know what? That just goes in the show. Like, it all depends on, like, how you grew up on how you see things. Because I was born in 92, but I was born into the military you know pretty much oh well you saw i was always like the only black kid in the class you know what i mean like it was like that until 10th grade when i moved to Miami. when my mom went tdi to korea and that was the first time i had ever went to a predominantly black school was 10th grade so and then the black the because since it was always um me being like the only black kid in the class with a whole bunch of white people asian people blah 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 the other black boys in there, especially with me being chubbier and all that stuff like that, they paid no attention to me. Like my first school boyfriends and all stuff like that, white, um, Mexican, Asian, he turned out to be gay. I don't want to say I added on to that, but you know, like I didn't have a black boyfriend until like ninth, 10th grade. And even so he was from Marion. So yeah so like i think that's where i'm coming from where i'm like i'm all for inter- interracial relationships is- for the longest time yeah that's what I was looking because black guys didn't pay attention to me oh well you this that's a whole nother topic because 
the way you just I thought you when you said you're willing to uh, date outside your race is because you just open but now you actually have a reason why because of how you grew up and the treatment well, the mistreatment of black men open. when you were around him but yeah but I think that's the reason why I'm open is because you know growing up when you know when you're coming into I don't know sexuality however you want to call it that right. those were my options the black boys that were around they didn't want me you know what I mean so right. it was just like those were my options so maybe that's why I'm so open but I mean to be honest I don't because of how I am I don't I don't see it being different had it been a different way but I don't know that because you know it didn't happen so right okay so let's move on to the third topic which is um and it's probably gonna roll people the wrong way but I mean it is it needs to be discussed which is the question is is it a black man's responsibility to take care of a single mother's children while they're in the dating phase <laughs> let's start with you um well while they're in a dating phase no yeah. it's not his responsibility in the dating phase uh because kind of sort of still in the dating phase you're getting to know the mother still right and the children i mean now you have to accept them if you're gonna if right. you're gonna talk to the mama you gotta accept the children but as far as it being his responsibility courtney and that <laughs> i'm trying to i'm not focused am i not blurry <laughs> yeah you blurry i thought you had a fly yeah. or something there <laughs> she was doing that right go ahead keep talking Keisha. but um but yeah it's not his responsibility but he does it, he does have to accept them though. if you're going to talk to the mama you have to be willing to accept the the kid or kids that she does have that's how that's how i feel about that and see this this would be great like remember last last topic we was talking about last episode we was talking about what's our limit on stepkids so this would be perfect like if we had a guy here so we can be like so what's your limit on right. but the highest because you know i you know i was out there you know sprinkling a little black girl magic so one guy told me the highest amount of kids that he would take like a girl is five i said oh my god that's high that's high that's high but you know but you know why guy? he said five first off he was older he was like damn near 50 and he had five kids himself. So I was like, I said, well, that, that kind of don't count. Because I said, I'm talking about like around my age. So my age, like 35, 34, 35, the highest I, I, a guy said was three, three kids. And two baby daddies. That's, that's as, as much as he can do. Okay, but what about those? What about those? I wonder, I wonder, because, you know, y'all can't answer for them. But what about those mamas that have six kids and one baby dad? We talk about that, but uh, Courtney, what's your opinion on uh, because because that they, they're not gonna like what I have to say, but I mean it's true. But... So Courtney, the question is: Is it a black man's responsibility to take care of a single mother's kids while they're in a dating phase? Absolutely not. I um even if they didn't have kids, no one owes you nothing. I I'm sorry. I just that's just how I see it. Like, cause you know, some girls, even the ones that don't have kids, they're like, my man should be getting my nails done, should be helping me pay for my hair and da 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 I'm not with that. I'm not with it at all. You're a grown ass woman. Take care of your own fucking self. And then if you want to get real technical with it, your nails, your hair, stuff like that, that's, that's, uh, it's not a necessity. You know what I mean? That's just something that you want to get done no one no one owes you anything and no one should be having to take care of you like you're their child you know what I mean and so like when you want to bring kids into it I mean I think when you're dating someone and they have kids and like you know they do gifts you know maybe take them school shopping and stuff like that that's real nice it's real you know that's real you know it's showing something you know what I mean like I care about you I care about your kids but they don't have to do that you know what I mean they don't have to do that whatsoever and they shouldn't be if you're with someone and they're not actively trying to, you know, pay to take you and your four kids out to eat every other Friday or something like that, they shouldn't be condemned for that. And you shouldn't be talking bad about them. Because Thank you. That's, 
that's that's a gift they don't have to do that they're doing that out of their own kindness you know what i mean out of their Black own heart. women like, will penalize a man because of what you just said because he will not pay for her food and them four kids for you like yeah. i'm just trying to get to know you but uh, okay so my take on it is i agree with both of y'all which is a man does not he is not required to take care of or spend his money on your kids first and foremost those are your kids and you're probably gonna say well we a lot of black women say well we a package deal we a package deal that's why a lot of y'all single <laughs> because uh ain't nobody looking for packages like that you know they like everybody don't want a bundle think about when uh uh, your, your, your phone company or Spectrum, Verizon, Boost Mobile, whatever they out. Every time you turn around, they either send you an email, they send you a flyer in the mail, they send you a letter. Are you trying to walk into the store just to get a charger, but they're trying to upgrade you with new bundles? And you always be like, oh no, I'm good, I'm good. Well, that's how a lot of black men are. Like they don't want bundles, which are your kids, you know, because that comes with problems and stuff. But I it's, get what. Go ahead, sorry, I didn't mean to I, I get what you're saying or what they say when they say, well, we're a package deal, you know, Um, but your package deal when he wants to pursue more with you. While he's exactly. just dating you, he's just trying to get to know who you are to even see if he wants to even go around your kids or be, meet your sister or your mother, you know, but the package deal comes in when he proposes to you. When y'all get married, that's when you're a package deal. So- right. I'm giving advice to say black women with children. I don't care if it's one child or five to six children. Stop Someone as commented. of today. Stop, huh? I said I was gonna say, go ahead, finish. Your, I was stop gonna say stop what, as what, today, what? like putting these high expectations on men, black, especially black men, because you already know financially they struggling, you know, the struggle. But stop putting financial uh burdens on men already when they're just trying to get to know you. Your children become a package deal once y'all get married. Right. Now, like Courtney said, he can do nice things out the kindness of his heart, but he's not required, honey, to take your children to Chuck E. Cheese. He's not required when your baby father or baby daddy ain't the, the child support ain't come through, and uh, you it, right, like right now it's Christmas time. Don't call that man asking that man for um, money for Christmas. <laughs> don't don't do that. That's very disrespectful. And a lot of women, y'all like to you say you ain't no prostitutes or no escorts, but you like to say, oh well, if I'm doing this with him sexually, like why he came? Well then, that's a customer and a client, not your boyfriend. <laughs> Separate the two. Stop um, calling yeah. these men asking for money for your children. That's not their responsibility. And if he say no, or I ain't got it, or you can't get mad with him. Them your children. So, but I, I would like to say, look, one last thing before you say what you're going to say. A lot of women need to be, start being self-sufficient. So before you even get into a relationship or start dating, make sure that you can handle all your bills along with your children. That, so whatever he gives you, whatever he gives you is extra, extra, said, not required. I said, don't be a nickel looking for a dime. Right. Right. Um, Patrice Avon said, as a single mother, a man will not even meet my daughter during the dating stage. Correct. It's, it's right. And I totally agree with that because you're still trying to figure out who is he? Exactly. Who, what, what's, what's his intentions? Like, is he here for me? Or is he just here because he needs a place to stay? Exactly. And I was going to yeah. add on to what you were saying earlier. Um, and what does a man look like spending these hundreds of dollars taking you and your kids out buying your kids birthday presents because you didn't have it that month or whatever, da, 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 that, this, that, and the fourth. And then three months later, y'all break up. Now he's right. just out hundreds of dollars for Listen. no reason and nothing to show for it. And you and the woman that moved on to the next guy, the next sucker or whatever. Already on to the next sucker. Already to the next one. For like, oh, uh, so what? So after, oh, Valentine's Day coming up. And so now, so because after Christmas and New Year's, you know, the next holiday is Valentine's. And so, you be like, oh, I gotta get me, you know, I gotta get me a new boo, you know, <laughs> I gotta, like, no, I, I just don't agree with that, and I know probably a lot of single mothers probably be like, no, we a package deal, y'all love to say that package deal shit, like, <laughs> no, be self-sufficient, so whatever a man 
provide for you and your children is just extra. It's a bonus. It's like work. You don't go to your job and be like, I need extra money this month. Can y'all yeah. loan me? No, you don't do that with your employer. But like I said, if you are, you have the mental to be like, well, I'm having sex with him. So he gonna, he gonna do something. Okay, well then that's your client and your customer. That's not your boyfriend. That's or a guy that you're, you're getting When you out. say that package deal thing, though, no, like, it's not a lie that they aren't a package deal, which they right. are a package well, they deal. They legally depends, become that. It depends on how they're trying to do that package deal. Uh, if you're trying to be a BOGO package deal. BOGO? Oh, oh, break it down. Buy one, get one. Because, see, like, when, well, it by might sound like a bad word. But, see, when you marry me and I got one, so you done brought one, you got one. Okay. okay. Or either it's it's just the point of a lot of things, if, if you see the guy being nice, if he decides to be nice to your kids, if he decides during your state dating stage, he decides, not you, he decides that, like you said, want to take them out, do nice things. He wants to do that at this point now. Some of them, they are showing you that he's accepting the children just as much as he's accepting you and that he can be in that life and he's wanting and he's willing. And so if it goes further, when he marries you, you already know he's going to be that typical stepdad or the typical man that'll be there for your kids. But the problem is, like you said, they don't let the man decide. They want them, they want them to automatically do it, thinking they're obligated when that's not even their seed. He's not, At all. He, he's not required to water a seed he didn't plant. It's a, thank you. Like, what's wrong with him? I, I don't know. It's a lot of them that where, do that, that. where does that but come from? Like, where does that come? Like, where does that mentality come from to say, well, you dating me? <sighs> okay, so it, to me, it seems like if a guy take you out on a date, and let's say you got, let's say most women have two kids, typically two kids. So he's taking you out on a date. Let's say y'all go to Red Lobster. And so it's winding down, you know, um, but you, 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 act, you know, the waitress usually come by and I always be like, Hey, um, can I get you guys anything? Is everything okay? You know, and you, and then the woman be like, cause this is basically what y'all are doing when you request things for me. You're asking, you're saying, Oh, can I get the menu one more time? And she'll be like, okay. And so he's looking at you like, okay. You're looking at the menu. Because you ordering food for your kids. Like you literally ordering food for your kids to take back home. And he don't even know their name. Yeah. So I don't get like, you don't find that like strange? Like that's so weird. I don't know if it goes into like women overvaluing themselves. I don't know. That's most but of a lot of, I don't, and I really don't know where this mentality comes from. Like you were asking, I really don't know where. I don't know if it's because other men were doing it and it just got blown up, and you know, people started hearing what you know other men were doing in different tax brackets than most of these men are. But it's that. almost like women are like, "I'm giving you my time, so I deserve anything that I ask for, but or I, I deserve to be compensated for giving you the time of day." When at the end of the day, you didn't have to say yes to that date. <laughs> well, that's that's the thing. This is, I, I'm I'm about choices. I'm pro choices. So with what you just said, the example that you just gave was how I, how I feel about it is that's fine, but that needs to be stated from the get go. Give that man a choice and an opportunity to decide if he want to deal with a type of woman like like you just described. So she's like, I would like to be compensated for my time, meaning she just. <laughs> She want to be compensated for her time. We'll just leave it at that. He can say, okay, he can negotiate. He can say, well, what's your prices? So if I just want to see you between the hours of 12 a.m. to 3 a.m., you know, how much does that cost? You know, versus him saying, well, can I take you out to lunch? You know, 
Because that 12 a.m. to 3 p.m., 3 a.m., you ain't getting nothing from that but a wet ass, as like old people like to say. But if he want to see you doing l- normal business hours, like lunch hours, then it's a, it could blossom into like something beautiful, like a relationship or something. But if you go ahead and like put like certain restrictions and stipulations on it, it's, it's going to be a problem. If you're going to do that, just go on to seekingarrangements.com. What? Because I'm going to sign up. <laughs> Huh? What, is, what is that? You never heard of Seeking Arrangement? It's literally a sugar daddy site. I heard about sugar babies, but... No, that's a site too, but it's it's a site called Seeking Arrangements. And it's literally like Tinder. And they use, and like all these sugar daddies are on there. And they're literally, um, <laughs> me and a coworker at my second job was, uh, she was telling me about it because she, she's on it. And she was showing me like, they is literally it said like, is I'm it looking successful for her? a single, huh? Is it successful her for her? Yes. Yes. It's very successful for her. Like she on there, like they can put like um uh looking for a single girl where I can meet up on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um first, you know, meetup is not paid, you know, just because we're trying to fill each other out, want it as natural as possible, you know, because if they don't vibe, then he don't want it. But she she was telling me how she went on there. The first time she went on there, she met up with somebody and like he like gave her like a hundred dollars for gas. She lived like 15 minutes away from where they went. She gave her a hundred dollars for gas and was like, uh, we'll talk about the next time. For a while they was only meeting up like every other weekend type of thing. And like it was literally an arrangement. But you understand that's sexual. That's that's those are sexual things. You do realize that, right? No, not always. I mean, she not always, me but she was telling me about it. Out of the three people that she had went up there with, she's only had sex with one of them, and that's because she wanted to. So uh, you said seeking arrangements. Courtney, <laughs> I'm so serious. There's men out there paying just for quality time. Oh wow, Courtney, you know I know that. You know I just went. I mean, you know. Men do pay just to, to talk to you. Like, hey, how you? How was your day? You all right? You good? You know, I'm like Denise. No, I don't. Hold on. I'm sorry. <laughs> what happened? I was looking at the. <laughs> what happened? What, what's the comment saying? Denise, uh, Denise Predalis said that's definitely not a requirement. I think it's basically what you all said before. Some women need to learn to be more self-sufficient and independent. She said, you low-key got a sugar daddy, Courtney. No, I don't. <laughs> probably, if I did, I wouldn't probably. be on the crumb of a situation ship, Denise. I promise I don't. But I'm on the verge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the verge. It's hard out here. <laughs> it is hard out here. Especially for me. <laughs> oh god that's seeking a right I'm, that's that sounds quite interesting like but i'd be so nervous and scared like <sighs> i just don't want to end up on it i, I just don't want to end up on a t-shirt or a hoodie huh i don't want to end up on a hoodie we like don't miss it <laughs> like where's that's you what I was telling my friend at work i was like i want to get on it but i'm like the first time someone tried to touch me i'm gonna scream i just know i am okay <laughs> but what they oh, well Go on it for research purposes for us, for the click. Go up there for research purposes. And then I feel like, because I was told that I would be a probably a great, what's the, it start with a D, like dom, dom, the matrix. What is it? The people that like, you can like tell them what the dominant. Dominatrix. Like, that. I would probably be great for that because of my attitude and how I am. Um, So attempt to do that. So like make your own thing. Like say, you can't touch me. It's straight and look me in no, my they eyes. Have, they have, they have that. They have that. Oh, now I'm, in, I'm intrigued. You think I should sign up so I can just yes, report? Yes, and then do it. So, like, I, I want to, I want to see if I, can, I think I could do because I kind of low key already was like kind of like controlling guys anyway. You know, I'd be like, is that? I don't want to. Oh, we're going into another. No, topic. no, no, no. It's not a kink. It's just more of a a guard, like guarding my feelings and heart, and because like I said, men ain't back then. It was. So I was like, I already know this ain't gonna be nothing, but what's good, you know? Like, no, no, I come when I want to. I see you when I want to. Blah blah blah, blah you know. But, but yeah. Uh, so we're gonna wrap this up. So Courtney, you said you're gonna do the research. You're gonna test uh, it out. I might, I might just go ahead and make a profile just to, you know, let people know the information. 
<laughs> yes. And then make sure you in control, not necessarily in control because men clearly they have money to spend um, and they just need company. They want company. It could either just be like some type of companionship where, you know, they're uh, just talking like, hey, how you doing? Um, How was your day? Because some men, like they may be like a widower, you know, lost their wife or lost their girlfriend. And sometimes men just want to see women do good. Like, you know, especially like for you, like you have your own stuff anyway. So it's not like you need it, you know, so you will be different. Like you're, you're higher quality than probably some women that are up there, you know, <laughs> not just, not because of looks, but I'm just saying you being self-sufficient. Like it's just ex- whatever they give you is extra, you know? Yeah, it is. It, is. it would be, it would be. And plus, I'll be getting out of it because you know I'm not getting no attention. I'm a Leo, and I need that. So, I'm, I'm so you're crazy. probably gonna, you're probably gonna have like a couple. So you probably have, you're probably you'll be booked. You have your Tuesdays and Thursdays, and your Mondays and Wednesdays, and then your Fridays and Saturdays. You know, you probably book. I'm like, just leave Sunday open so we can do the show. Denise said Ashley about to try to bank off sugar daddies. Um, honestly, I want to do the. What's the word? How you pronounce it? What? The D word. Dominatrix. I need it. I got a, that's the vocabulary word I'm working on. I want to do that. Like, I want to do the shut the fuck up now. <laughs> Who are you looking at? You know, that's like, I want to do that. I want to do that. Like, I don't know Say about the whip. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I don't know about the whipping part, you know, but I just want to be. Like, don't get it twisted. I, I used to be on this chat line like a long time ago, and it was like some weird people that was up there. Like, I'm not into like certain fetishes, like the the adults wanting to be a baby. Cause like there was some guys that would, like try to hit me up, mostly Caucasian. They would be like, Oh, um, can you be my mommy? And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? They'd be like, Can you change my diaper? I'm like, next. <laughs> we I'm not playing in no shit. I'm not doing it. Listen, no matter what you think of, there's a fetish for it. So. It is. I think one of the most interesting fetishes that I learned about was fur babies, a furry. That's where like adults dressed in those costumes. I, I watched a video about that. They just <laughs> <her>. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that's kind of low-key interesting and it's secretive, but like they have like the little flaps away, like they still have on the mask and a uniform, but they they having sex that you know and i'm like hmm that's interesting well, i watched a video about that i was very interested i, I was like i love him i don't know if i'm weird but uh i was like that's neat you know because you can you don't never have to disclose your identity you'd be like i'm just fat cat you know <laughs> you just come up with a pet name i'm garfield you know like you just come up with a pet name the fox up in here <laughs> you know, you know. All right, so, all right, so the fourth Denise question. Said, hold on, Denise said for y'all to um share y'all experience because it's about to be interesting. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, I can't get up there right now. I'm kind of in the middle of something. I'm trying to. I'm trying to be like Denise. I'm trying to get locked down a little bit. I mean, it's I time. want to see Denise. I want to get locked down too. But you know, I might just just for uh research purposes. Right, get see, yeah, we gotta send Courtney out there. You know, Courtney's our young investigator, our private investigator. We gotta send her out there, you know. Um, okay, so is there any more questions? Or that was it. Um, Kylette said what number y'all on? Uh, we're going into number four, uh, which is uh black women requesting the last word in an argument. So since you're start self-claimed that person, um, do you consider that independence or just being argumentative, honestly? And you could take a moment to think about it. Why do you have to have the last word, Courtney? Why you just can't? I wouldn't call it independence. I wouldn't call it necessarily uh, argumentative. Argumentative. I think it's a more so a pride thing. Okay. Um, than anything. Um, what's your, what's your, what's I, your I zodiac with sign? Huh? What's your zodiac sign? I'm a Leo. Okay. So that's why I always like the last word. <laughs> I'm a, I, and I consider myself a true Leo. I know some people don't care about zodiac signs and all stuff like that, but I'm into the whole natal chart. Like, I don't, yeah. So I, I think it's more so of a pride thing than anything, especially like, like if I have like a, 
an argument with my mom or something, I'm gonna shut up because that's my mom. You know what I mean? Right, right. But if it's someone who I consider on the same level as me, there's I have to have a conversation with myself because it goes either way. But I, I, I definitely want the last word mainly because it's a pride thing. Like I don't want you to win this. <laughs> oh my god. It also it also depends on the level of the seriousness of the argument as well. Like, especially I want to say in my last relationship, whenever we were arguing stuff, he was pretty hard headed too. Um, he was a Taurus, so okay. Uh, but he was pretty hard headed too, especially wanting the last word and stuff. So it's like we we kept clashing on that thing. But the thing was, was I was able to take a step back at least after the argument, if not during during was very rare but it was when I actually realized in the argument that like I am wrong you know what I mean (laughs) like when you're going back and forth and you're actually like taking in what someone's saying to you besides just pure arguing that's when I had to take a step back and I'm like well let me shut up let me you know calm down whatever but more so it's more so a pride thing I don't want you to win this argument I don't want you to win I want to be right I'm not gonna let this go and so they'd be like you know it's whatever man whatever yeah it is whatever you right (laughs) the man just said it's whatever yeah it is it is whatever it is whatever man i'm letting it go why you ain't letting it go you the one still talking (laughs) what about you kista like do you have to have the last word or what is it with you uh not now i used to but then when i used to feel like i had the last word it's like i had the. it's like i was so I guess some could be argumentative or some could be I just had to make sure my point was across. <laughs> like I I felt like if I had that last word, my point got crossed. Like that's that's and it. How, so and so how did that turn out for you? Like was it like oh he he actually understood or it was just like it was pointless? Both. Okay. So it depends on the person. It all depends on the person. And what you're talking about or fussing about, like it all depends on that. But I got to a point now that like that I'm like I don't care if I have the last word, right. depending on especially what it's about. I don't care if I have the last word as long as you gone. I I I don't even care as long as it's over. Uh, I'm like I'm like that girl. Uh, blame it on me. Say it's my oh, fault. Oh, Chrisette Michelle, I love yeah, like, her. Like, as long as it's over. I still ain't forgiving her for singing at the White House, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> but I, I just, um, I'm just, yeah. I, I, but I, it took me a while to get to this point though. That right. I'm like, you know, I don't. It, it doesn't matter because I feel like if we're actually gonna argue, nobody's not gonna hear each other because you're too busy wanting the last word or wanting to hear. You know, you want to know that the other person got what you're saying. So. Yeah, but it took me a while to get to this point, though. Okay, um, to restate the question, um, why do black women like want the last word or whatever? Um, is it argumentative or is it just an independence thing? Um, I think me, I never really cared about the last word, and honestly, it's an independence thing, which I know you probably people probably be like, well, hold up. Most women who want the last word is because they independent, you know, but no, for me, I've always been more of a nonchalant person. Uh, I, I was, I've been, I, I, what is it? Whatever the acronym is. Um, I don't give a fuck. (laughs) I've been that before that even became like a hashtag or acronym. Um, I just like peace, like my mental peace, not like, like I'm like, oh my God, whatever he said, go. I've never been that type of girl, you know, but I've just been more of a, okay. All right. And you know what? Because I'm that, okay. That would cause an argument. Like that would prolong the argument. It would go further and further and further and further, which is ridiculous, which is weird. I will be like, I was like, all I said was okay. All right, because I'm not going to go there with you. I'm not going to keep going back and forth with you. I'm not going to be argumentative with you. Um, I'm already fat. Like, you're not about to rub my blood pressure up. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not. I'm serious. I literally would say that. I'm like, listen, 
I'm already fat. Like, I'm, you're not getting my blood pressure. Like, you're not about to give me no damn stroke. Like, that literally used to be like a bumper sticker for me. And guys used to hate that. They would laugh and be like, why do you keep saying? I'm like, because I'm, you're not giving me a stroke. Like, I'm not arguing with you. I'm, it's not, I heard what you said. I said what I said. We have not come up to a mutual agreement, you know, but that was back in the younger days. Like now, the type of caliber of men that I deal with now, pretty much uh, ones that I take serious, um, we, they're adults, they're grown as fuck. So we can come to a mutual understanding. We can compromise without all that extra stuff, you know, without really raising our voices or me getting my blood pressure up or him calling me outside my name, being a B, you know, me calling him calling me the B word or me calling him a, a stupid Emma Alpha. <laughs> I love that that's my favorite cuss word motherfucker like that's my favorite one but um but yeah like I, I've never been the argumentative type you know I've just always been the okay and so guys would think that I don't care but I do care I just I'm not doing it I'm not doing it I'm not going there with you so um I think women like that huh it takes a good person to be like okay yeah, like literally, like, but I'm a Scorpio. So like when I get upset, like I I I'm extra. Like I'm extra as fuck. Like I ain't gonna lie to you. That's why I think I'm like that. I think I'm like I suppress a lot of anger, you know. Um, which which actually I do, <laughs> hence me being diagnosed as an emotional eater, you know. Um, but I suppress a lot of anger because when I get upset, I am like it ain't, this shit ain't over with, like, and I'm not even in the streets, like, I'll take some shit streetwise, I'll be like, I'm getting that bitch fired, uh, fuck they mama, uh, them nappy ass headed kids, like, I'm just, everybody is being destroyed, like, I'm sending, and I'm, I'm, listen, don't get me upset, like, I'm corporate America, like, I'm sending emails, like, I'm making sure you're getting, like, fired, like, suspended, like, don't get me upset, Cause I, I'm not gonna be like, oh, pull up. I'm not going live on Facebook. I ain't doing all that. I'm just gonna get you fired. We have a few comments. Um, Deandra Williams said, hashtag Team Leo facts. <laughs> Hi, uh, Deandra. <laughs> Denise said, oh my god, yes, I have to have the last word. But I found my match with my husband. It's competition with us. <laughs> oh yeah that's another thing like why do we why is it a competition like why it's just like it's like a tug of war like no 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 you come up no you come up like just somebody got it somebody got to say you know what babe like you know i'm in a new situation so um i'm i'm taking uh i used to watch a lot of divorce court so the guy that i'm, I'm talking to now i told him i said we get into an argument i want to do the 24 hour game which is all right, less than 24 hours, meaning like, I don't want to go to bed angry with you. I, I don't. Like, let's just sit down. With it. We, when you get off from work, I'm off the clock. Let's just talk about it. Because I don't want to be angry. I don't want to go to bed angry. Like, I don't want to that, that was a big issue with my last relationship is the, he was already, he's always ready to L-I-G it, let it go. And I'm like, no, we have to talk about this because I'm a person that needs it to be For your I understanding. Need yeah. Closure. I need a, a, a understanding, even if we agree to disagree or whatever. But I need this needs to be talked about. But he was always like, uh, just let it go, let it go. But I'm like, it's going to come up again. You're, sweet, you're just sweeping <laughs> it under the rug. And then you know what happens when you sweep, keep sweeping shit under the rug? It's flat at first, but you keep sweeping it. And then it's a, it's a bump you're going to trip over and then when you trip over that's when the relationship is over with because you had the opportunity exactly. to fix the situation which you exactly. you know i, I don't that like that one of our, our biggest issues because i was just like we need to talk about it we need to talk about it you know what a, a, a let it go person i've noticed that those type of people also are the people that god i hate men like this i hate men like this that say that was in the past nigga that was just last week I hate guys that do that. Like my ex, one of my exes used to do that all the time. Matter of fact, the ex that I was talking about on the second last week, the one that was like uh the emoji, the emotional cheater, because he was grieving doing his mom passing and stuff. And I'm like, why are you talking to such and such? Or why you or why you didn't say something? Oh, that was last week. That's in the past. Let it go. 
That was just last week, seven days ago. And then guess what would happen? Oh, now I'm nagging. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <sighs> well, some dudes are like that though. Like they feel like once they done talked about it, and y'all done said something, whoever got the last word got the last word. It's like, okay, we done. That's it. I don't know why, because that that last situation I had, uh, they would come back and they would apologize, but um, if I try to like say, well, don't forget you did this. It's 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 done now. It's over. Like because they feel like it's done because they don't apologize. Like it's just it just got to be over. Yeah. And that could be ju- that could like literally just happen. Not too not too long ago. So I don't I don't know say, why. I'm sorry doesn't mean that doesn't right. Put, that's just that's not even a band aid on it. That's just bullshit. Like. Right, but I don't know why they do that though. But you have some that feel like once they either apologize, once you guys have talked about it, once you done settled this or settled that, they feel like okay, boom, that's it now, it's over, we don't go back to that. That's and just that's how, how you, that's why you gotta allow these men to you gotta give them enough time to learn who you are because I don't know who you dealt with in the past or what type of women you dealt with. They accept that I'm sorry, babe. Nigga, you just cussed me out. No, we're not letting that go like that. You and you, you're doing too much. You're drinking too much. You're talking too much. You do, like no, I'm not letting that go. So, but that's why it's important to allow yourself, men and women, um, to get to know people so you can determine. Like right now, when you're when you're talking to someone, you just those are your that's an associate. Like if you want to pursue something with someone, basically you interviewing. I'm interviewing somebody right now for the position of being my husband and my child, my children, the father of my children. Right now you're in the interview phase, you know, you're talking, you're asking questions and everything. Then after that, then that's when you start, you're like, okay, well, they passed the the first interview, you know, the phone, they they passed the phone interview. Then you're calling me for an in-person interview, which is dating. Like you, you go like out to eat and stuff like that. Then they pass that. Then you say, okay, well, uh, you know, kind of running by your do running by your friends a little bit, and you know, they pass that. Okay, so now let's time for the background check. You know, um, but I think people should just give each other enough time to get to know each other, so they can learn how to deal with you, and you can learn whether or not you want to put up with them. You know, but a lot of people love to say, "Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize." That's just a band aid. Like, it's not. Yeah, Yeah, because we we gotta talk about like how did we get to this point where you needed to apologize? I need to know what you were like, how did you what happened here? You know, (laughs) like you cussed me out. Why did you cuss me out? And why did you feel like it was okay to cuss me out? You know what I mean? Right. It's a lot. All right. So um, so what we learned here with this fourth question, which is um black women were kind of both of y'all requested the last word so have you guys changed i know kisa says she don't do that no more but courtney are you reformed or are you still struggling you still in rehab i mean i haven't <laughs> argued like argue like really argue with someone in a while so i don't know if i've changed but you know what if i shut up that just shows how much i no i'm not <laughs> gonna say that <laughs> if i if i'm in an argument and i actually shut up and like sit there and listen to what you have to say that just shows that I'm trying to understand right but if I'm just like back and forth back and forth back and forth then I really don't care and I'm just trying to win this argument I don't you know what I mean like so I feel like uh yeah hopefully whoever I argue with in the future they know me to understand how much it took for me to just (laughs) you say how much it took for you okay all right, so we're going to do the last question, um, which is the, uh, what was it? Oh, we're, we're going to incorporate a little bit of sexiness, you know. Um, is sexting considered foreplay? I think it is. Because it's a mental thing. Like, I think once body parts start moving, our body parts start getting moisture (laughs) I just feel like that is foreplay I think sexing is foreplay before 
the physical foreplay. I think that's like a mental foreplay. So when we was talking about like cheating, like emotionally, physically, spiritually, you know, I, I think that's how foreplay is broken down to now because, you know, reasons being with this COVID, you know, situation in 2020 and social distancing and stuff, like a lot of online dating has increased because you need somebody to talk to. You know, you need somebody to talk to. A lot of this video chat and stuff, which I would never do video chat. Like, even if I get married, like, I, I tell guys that now. I'm like, listen, I own a business. And then whenever you get mad with me, you're never going to be like, upload. Like, hell no. <laughs> Don't do me like that. So I, I'm like, listen, even if I get married, I'm not doing videos. I'm not doing videos. I'm not sending you pictures. Huh? That's why you cut your face off. I ain't doing it, period. Now, I will say this right here. Back in the day, I used to log on to porn sites, BBW girls, and I would steal pictures and act like it was me. But I'm not going to so crazy. <laughs> I was catfish. <laughs> this my thing. The only Listen. All jokes aside, I oh, said good. no, I'm not sending you the picture. But I would get harassed and harassed and harassed. Like, yo, come on, just I mean, just one one titty, uh, uh, one nipple, one ass cheek. You ain't gotta put both of them in there, just one of them. I'm like, all right, fuck it. And so I'll just go on the little porn. I'll be like, big booty bitches, you know. <laughs> and then you know it was so crazy for me, the hard part. It's finding somebody with my complexion. Like, I like a girl ass. I'm like, oh, this is a nice one. This will get him right, you know. But she wouldn't be my skin complexion. And I'm like, fuck. So now I got to go over here. And then, you know, hood girls got tattoos on their ass. So I find somebody with my skin complexion. But then she got a butterfly on her ass. And I'm like, damn, I ain't got no tattoo. Now I got to go over here. This Like, it was so hard. Y'all don't understand how hard it is catfishing niggas. Like, damn. That shit was a job. It was hard. Oh, I'm doing. So uh, what I started doing was I started saving when I would finally find a big booty girl, BBW. That was my complexion, you know, kind of my body frame or whatever. I just say them photos, you know, and you know how hard it is trying to, uh, you know how hard it is because guys are like freaky. Freaky, freaky! Like they want us. They want the the sheet wet. Like they just. It was. I know that's what. I'm, it was hard for me. The catfish. Like it was hard. I had to like literally watch a whole porn. I'm like, and then like screenshot it at that moment because I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm not. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm not doing that. All you had to do was cut your face off. You just make sure you don't I have do. a face in there. The thing it's is for me because I got tattoos. This, this is this is why it wouldn't work for me, Courtney. I, I totally understand what you're saying. I, I get what you're saying. But whenever a guy get mad with me and upload my shit trying to do what they call it revenge porn, I can't log on and say, that ain't me, fool, because I know that's me. So it's going to fuck with my mental because I know that's me. But when a guy does get mad with me and say, uh, send, upload, and he be like, yeah, you won't say that when you was doing this right here, planning that stuff, I'll be like, boy, that ain't me, your dumb ass. And then I'll just send in the link, you know. That's, that's, well, that just ties back into you got to know who you're talking to because- Exactly. But I, like I said, I don't I'm still, even if I get married, I'm still not doing it. Anyone who I didn't know for a fact was mature enough and grown enough not to do that type of stuff. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, listen, listen. I told you. I, I told you. Understand what's what's what happening? What's happening? Yeah, just say you still got them photos. <laughs> I mean, I'm still dating. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, listen, Deandra. I'm talking she to somebody right now. I'm I'm talking to somebody. No, her, is she asking me do I still got the photos or is she telling me I still got the photos? She said you. you. Oh, she she right. She right because guys, it's hard. Like. Like I told you, it's hard trying to find somebody my complexion, no tattoos, my body size, like, and then I'm picky, like, I don't want, like, I just, I just, 
I don't want bumps on my ass. Like, cause I, I'm trying to be more realistic to who I am. So it's hard trying to find that, you know. Um, so what do you do when you send in these non pictures of yourself to these men and then you meet up with them? What? Not saying oh, that you. Oh, have- oh, 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 no. Ho, 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 pause. Wait, 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 let me finish. Not saying that you have done that. I'm saying, like, what would you do in that situation where if you sent that picture and then they see the real thing and they're like, that don't look like the picture. Oh, no, no, no. That's what I'm saying. Like, okay, first off, the guys that I did that with, um, okay, let's fuck on it. What I'm saying is, I that's why it, took, it was so stressful for me because I tried to match up with me as much as possible. So it was real, like the stuff that I, I sent them, if, if it went that far, because I will say this, I've sent more of those photos to guys that I've never even dealt with before, because it was just, you know, maybe a phone conversation or we was just going out to eat, date, dating, but no sexual thing, you know, but by us doing that, that sex thing, that phone sex bullshit, you know, that, of course, that wanted them to get with me more, you know, it'll be on some shit, like we sitting there trying to eat food and they be like, let's get dessert to go where we going you must be talking in a plastic container because uh we ain't going to no room or no mess like that and you ain't coming to my house you know but yeah to answer the question um it would be like i don't send things that 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 does not pertain to me so like it would be my complexion it'll be me like but it's just not me you see what i'm saying it's my skin tone it's my shape of my ass it's my uh black line here blackness there like because you gotta say it's a bbw you know she got a good you know it's me it's just not me if you it's me but it's not me you know but i don't have to do that right now like i think i'm talking i i don't have to do that right now i right now there's no pictures being involved because i let i like i'm grown now and so the guys that i the guy well, guys, uh, before I, you know, only talking to one person, I would let them know, I let everybody know, like, I'm not doing that. Like, if it gets to that point where we're sexting, because guys always initiate it, always, like, so when it gets there, I just be like, I'm not doing a live video, because I know people can screen record, and I'm not sending no video, I ain't, like Courtney said, I ain't cutting shit off, I ain't chopping nothing, no, you know, I'm just not doing it. So do you, uh, so do you still send pictures? I mean, <laughs> do you send real pictures? Yeah. If I send a picture, it's of me. I know. If, so you're, if not, I, so you're not afraid that when a guy get mad with you, he's going to like revenge porn you? Well, see, here's the thing. <laughs> the, if I send a picture, it's someone that I know. We always do that. I but mean, let me finish. Let me finish. It's someone that I, if I send a picture, it's someone that I know and it's not going to be, it's someone that I know is, is going to take care of it. Does that make sense? Like, they're not. Like, you trust of, them. You, they, they would never I trust do them. That. Exactly. I trust them in so far, so good. <laughs> um, <laughs> it hasn't got to that point. Um, like, I'm not this might be TMI, but the last person I sent a picture to, we're not talking, and, but nothing, you know what I mean, because they're, they're, he's a grown man, like, he's not, he's not gonna do that, you know, that was sent for him, but I don't want to add to nobody's collection either, you see what I'm saying, like, I don't want to, I don't want to add to your collection either, I mean, I I I get that, to each each his own, but I'm just, I'm just letting y'all know that period i'm not sending i'm like why do you want to be like the real thing is better like the, the in person is always better you know and that's what i always say i'm like no i don't send pictures but you can see it in person you can see me in person. i mean don't get me wrong like i wouldn't send a picture to everyone who i was you know granted that's like i said right very, right you know it's hard out here for me but oh my god i wouldn't send a picture but the people i do send a picture to is just not the people I'm, let me rephrase that. The, per, the person. If I send a picture to a person, it's like most of the time they've already seen it. So it's like. Okay. Yeah, I still don't care. <laughs> and then after, after they, like, let's say I sent the fake picture, the catfish picture, 
and then in person, you know, it's always better in person, of course. Then after that, of course, they, I, I don't get harassed no more about it. I don't, I don't even have to, you know, but I still keep it on, like Deanna just said, I still keep it on deck just in case if I got to hit the restart button and start all over again with a whole new person. And normally back to the whole sex and thing, I like to exchange. So. Oh, you know what? Guys will snap. That, oh, can we talk about that? I don't that, like Yeah, we do because I, I just got violated. Her. Remember, the, you know, the person who I just sent y'all about the cake, the cake and the, the lima beans and shit. I'm out there in the backyard the other day. I slapped me in my damn face. I say, you nasty mother effer. I didn't ask for that. I did not ask for that. Don't disrespect me like that because you know I'm talking to somebody right now. Like, don't disrespect me like that. It's, it's not even, my, I don't like getting pictures that I didn't ask for because one, I'm not ready for it. I swear I had got one on Facebook a while ago because I had posted something on my story and they sent me that back as a reply to my story and I screamed. I literally, I literally screamed. I wasn't like I didn't ask was for it that. Ugly? I wasn't beautiful. Was it how was? Huh? How would you rate it? Like was it like? Hmm. It was when I went back and <laughs> when I went back and went because I literally I was like, ah! <laughs> and I, I put my phone down like I threw the phone. But when I went back and looked, it was like oh, okay. But it was just like I didn't ask for this. Like don't send me. I didn't ask for it. Don't See, send it to me. And, and that's what I had to let the guy know. I said, listen, women, we're different. Like, when we see y'all a picture, y'all get automatically, like, aroused. You know, women, if we ain't asked for it, don't send it, because we take offense to that. Like, you know, unless you're a freak or something like that. But I don't, if I ain't asked you for that, don't be sending me no shit like that. And I told him that. I said, don't do that. I feel like you're disrespecting me because you know I'm in a situation. I'm, try I'm trying to, you know... And I think he's trying to sabotage me. So I'm probably gonna have to block him, you know. Situation or not. If I didn't ask for it, don't send it don't to send me. It. Or better yet, should I say, if I've never asked for it, don't send it to me. If I've asked for it and you sent it to me and you just randomly wanted to send it, that's a different thing because I've already asked for it. <laughs> this is this is what he said. He said something similar to what you said a little bit earlier, which is you already seen it, so what's the big deal? Okay, I have, but still, if I ain't asked for it, don't send it. Well, I consider sexting foreplay. I do too. I I, I do too. What about you, Kisa? And I like it. I like it too. It makes me creative. Like I didn't know I was a fucking author. Girl, I'll be I'll be sitting back reading some of my stuff. I'm like, oh, I am amazing. Like I like, mentally, uh, I can let me tell you yeah. something. I just it gets you hype. It does. It gets you hype in the best ways possible. And use you can use it for material for later. <laughs> I need to start, you know what? I need to start. I need to create like a little note. <laughs> I need to create a note in my phone and just like copy and paste everything I say. Like, cause I do stories. Like, like honestly, I can watch a porn and not get like aroused because porns, most of them are like weird as fuck anyway, you know. I literally will watch a point. I'd be like, this is so corny. Like, why she just didn't? Like, I hate the ones where women need something fixed. Like, they be, oh, my stove went out. And then she calls the uh the, the uh, repair person and then he fixes it, fake fixes it. And then he'd be like, okay, that was a hundred dollars. And then she'd be like, I don't have my bag. I don't have a hundred dollars. That's why you skip all that. No, I got to watch it. <laughs> I, I, if we're gonna get on that conversation, I prefer like the real people. What do you mean? Like you know how like if you go on like, you know, like home homemade stuff. Yes, I prefer real people because one, you don't get all that 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 that, that, that storyline. Because if I if I'm watching one and then it starts off like my uh i hate my stepbrother he's always walking in on me at the wrong time that just it turned me off so i'm just like when you get to like the real videos you know what i mean like the homemade ones they just get to the point okay this is my see that's why i say i watch porn like it's tv like porn does not arouse me the reason why i don't prefer homemade is because i'm a hood interior designer i'm in the background like while he's dicking her down i'm in the background like 
why they got sheets up to the window? Why, why they ain't got no curtains? They look a good over 35. Why they ain't got no curtains in here? See, you're and doing then, too much. You're looking into I know, it I know. That's what I'm saying. My mind, it doesn't work for me. Like, porn doesn't work for me. I'm just like... You're doing too much. I know. And I'm already decorating their house. I'm wondering why they ain't got a better <laughs> bed. I'm like, I, mean, I know they hear them kids out there crying. Like, it's just too... I'm just, I mean, listen, don't get me wrong. Like, if it's bad, like, if the background is really bad, then I have to, you know, change to another one. But for the most part, that's not what I'm looking for, so... You go up there with the intensity as a single woman, you go up there looking for relief or whatever, but you up there, I'm up there like, okay, next. Like I like we're we're going to that. We're talking about porn categories. Like what's what's our like ranking porn categories? Oh, we should talk about this next episode. I can't wait. Why are you putting your face up like that, sister? I don't I'm not too my face up or nothing but I just like I wouldn't be able to join into that conversation because I don't watch it it makes me sick really yeah I tried like my first boyfriend he wanted me to watch it with him and I was like "Eh." and so it's just it literally was like making me sick to my stomach I've never done that I'll say well well I dealt with a guy, my friends with benefits situation, um, he was just weird as fuck anyway. Like, he just always wanted to role play. So, but I had to cut him off when he wanted to role play like he wanted to rob me. I told you about that. I was like, I ain't doing no shit like that. But, um, but I think to me, I, w- I would take offense to a person that want to watch porn when I'm like, oh, luscious. Oh luscious. my God. We should add that into the next one because... Uh, I wasn't in a situation, but I was uh, I was frequently seeing this person at my old job in South Carolina, mm-hmm. and the whole porn thing was like a big thing, a big issue in his his relationship or his marriage, should I say, because he was married, and I just, I to this day, I still don't understand her side. I will never understand her side. But she didn't, she didn't want to watch it, or she she didn't want to watch it but she didn't understand why he watched it either and she literally counted it as cheating and i still to this day don't understand well this is the thing okay 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 we'll say that for the next time but my thing is i don't understand why you want to watch porn like i'm saying like i'm here and you're saying like let's cut on a porn like then you're not in the mood then get the get off of me like get from around you're not in the mood if you gotta watch that go go do it on your phone most of, the, most of the time when they start watching that they are in a mood but why do you why do you, it's a stimulation it's just like bringing toys into the relationship it's just like it's a, it's a stimulation like i don't we gotta get into it next okay episode. we get into it we're it's literally i I'm sorry. I just don't understand that side of it. I don't. I can't. All right. So wrapping this up, um, that was uh we the questions and everything. Um possibly we may do one in the middle of the week, if possible, another um episode. If not, then we will see you guys Sunday. Um make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube page and then also go to my facebook page and go on my website and order something you know but thanks for and don't be scared to interact with us and comment i'm talking to you as my cousin who was watching <laughs> well you thank you comment. for the support What's, how you pronounce it ajene ajene that's beautiful um ajene go to uh youtube you can type in actually tell me something you can go up there you can support it as well that, okay <laughs> well then you can also go back and on courtney's page and then our danielle's page and then just click on it if you want to go back and rewatch it but peace out you guys i'll see you guys next sunday